My guest today is Nisayini Rexash. Nisayini, how are you? Hi, David. Good morning. Happy to be here with you on Teams. Me too. Uh, tell me, what do you do for a living, Nisayini? I work for Microsoft, and I am on the Philanthropies team based here in Chicago, and am very thrilled about the work and role that I have to empower organizations and people to go farther. Mm -hmm. through nonprofits. Uh, you're making the world a better place and you're making a living doing it. What could be better? Really trying to definitely feel that I'm at the epicenter of my passions and purpose from a career trajectory perspective. Uh, before we started recording, I was asking you about some of your passions and you talked about a little about education is one of them. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. I'm a former educator myself. I entered the world of education through Teach for America. And while at the time I didn't know how significant that decision would have been for me, it proved to be monumental leading up to where I am today. The role and experiences I garnered as a former educator, they they have left an indelible mark in how I view what I want to be involved in, what personal nonprofits I'm committed to, mm -hmm. and why working, serving, and supporting young people is still such a high passion of mine. Excellent. And you've been doing, uh, since you've been involved in education for a while, you've probably seen things change over the year. What's some significant changes you've seen? Yes. Education has definitely seen an overhaul of change. Similar to other industries, the pandemic really accelerated this change and the need, reliance, and dependence on technology and what does it mean to be digitally fluent, even more so being able to continue on with operations and teaching and learning through the use of technology. And we saw how much or how many barriers rather were on the table to continue school operations in the in the height of the pandemic. Yeah, there's a lot of things that uh, uh, technology touches on in education, and the pandemic certainly accelerated a lot of that. Uh, but right now, these days, I'm hearing a lot about artificial intelligence. How has that impacted education? Yes, AI is quite the buzz since... Yeah. November 2020, it has been at the forefront of technology trends, of conversations, of even the connection to the stock market and the companies that are doing really well because of being able to implement and adopt artificial intelligence and or machine learning into their business practices and how they serve their customers or their partners with this really revolutionary type of technology. And I would say there are various viewpoints in the world of education as to, is there a place for artificial intelligence? How does artificial intelligence show up in instruction? Should students have the ability to use it to get classwork and or take home assignments? I'm of the mindset of how the dot-com era changed the world of work. It changed society. Sure. It changed how you would look up finding a restaurant. You no longer go to the yellow pages. You can find this at your fingertips. You can book travel. The internet really, really changed life as we knew it prior to things just being completely analog. Artificial intelligence, in my opinion, based on data, based on trends, based on societal adoption and consumption, is going to have the same effect in education. It's more a question of how long will it take for this to be more of a widely accepted practice and tool that educators have access to versus whether or not it should be included. Uh, so artificial intelligence brings out a revolutionary change, not just an evolutionary change. Kind of like uh, I think a lot of people don't even have never used 
the yellow pages. People watching this show, there's an entire generation doesn't even know what that is, <laughs> even though I grew up with it. Um, what what are some of the issues? You know, you mentioned that there's some controversy, maybe about uh, question about whether or not we should use artificial intelligence in education. Why is that? Yeah, so I would say based on trends and articles that I've read, some of the cited concerns are academic dishonesty and work product creation. Is this deemed plagiarism by the students? If a tool such as ChatGPT is leveraged in co-creation of an essay, it can also be students not needing or having the necessary think time to go through the writer's traditional process of creating an essay. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it could be data and privacy around students using this from the trends that I have read upon. But I actually just view this in a different way. I think that if students are primed and positioned to know how to leverage artificial intelligence responsibly, it could actually enhance and aid their intellectual rigor and curiosity through the use of this type of technology that in their future respective workplaces will be waiting for them. So I'd actually argue that we would be doing students a disservice by not exposing artificial intelligence early on in their academic journeys, because the marketplace is not going to be freed of AI use. If anything, it's going to accelerate rather quickly and become an anchor we're not in the workforce. We're not going to uninvent this thing. No. All right. So you're saying that uh, <clears throat> AI is another tool that's going to be important in their career going forward, just like calculators were a tool, just like internet search engines were a tool, rather than ban them because we're afraid calculators were decrease our arithmetic skills. Let's teach teach kids how to use them because they're going to be used them in the real world. Correct. Yes, I'd actually say this is a pretty similar argument to the use of a Texas instrument calculator and the resistance that was on the table early on and saying mathematical equations or inductive and deductive reasoning should still be done by hand very similar dissonance on the ai front yeah good point um now you talked about uh using ai responsibly and you gave an example of using it irresponsibly students could just copy someone else or just use verbatim what chat gpt returns which feels wrong to me to turn that as your own work but uh what's how, how can they use it responsibly yeah so one idea that comes to mind you know it is hispanic heritage month so i was thinking if i was still in the classroom right now i taught secondary level students and said hey, we're doing a unit on Latinos who were pioneers, trailblazers, and leveraged advocacy to shift some sort of practice or sector or legislation. I would tell my students, on today's unit, we're going to be exploring a conversation to convert it into an interview with Cesar Chavez and bring in chat GPT into the equation and or Bing chat and help our students really think about what would be the essential questions that you would want to ask Cesar Chavez based on his historical context, the role that he played for farm workers receiving equal and just treatment by, by, by labor standards, and helping them frame and position the reasoning engine, aka ChatGPT or Bing Chat, to help actually formulate like the art of powerful questions, right? Have a student mm. come up with their question and then now that juxtaposition of entering it into Bing Chat and or Chat GPT, how, how did these questions get you farther to what, what would you wanna know from Cesar, right? And really widening and opening a student's mind on would you need 10 questions or five really good ones, the same way that if we were 
sitting down with Robin Roberts, who's a well-known anchor, right? Mm -hmm. The art of powerful questions, if she has a three-minute segment, the, the types of questions become that more essential. And how could we use technology to train that investigative reporting and or that objective conversation that we are looking to have? In this case, it could be Cesar Chavez, but it could be anyone. It could be someone current. It could be a topic. It could be even asking Cesar Chavez, in your time, if you had a tool like ChatGPT, how could you have or orchestrated your labor advocacy for the farm workers that you were protecting in your time? I just think there's ways to be super innovative with how you expose and include technology and learning. Uh, this is a really good point that I can relate to because uh, I wasn't born with the ability to ask good questions, and it's a life skill that that helps a lot. You know, if I want to get the right answer, I have to articulate the question properly. And um, there was a time I just wasn't good at that, and I didn't have a chat GPT to practice on. I only had human beings to practice on. <laughs> but um, uh, the more specific I can be with the information that I'm requesting, the better off, the better the answers I'm going to get. Uh, this show Absolutely. has helped me help me to practice that a little bit. Um, uh, what else? What's the other? Uh, what are some other advantages or ways that we can use AI responsibly in education? It it's cross disciplinary. You can use this in science, just as mm -hmm. you could use it in humanities. The ability to compare and have students do a side by side comparison. It could be if we were thinking about how to increase fan engagement of local professional Chicago sports teams, and we needed quick data analytics that we're now using in math because this is a cross-disciplinary project that our teachers put together, how could we compare fan engagement across the Chicago Cubs versus the White Sox and then have some research that we could use Bing Chat and or ChatGPT for in our social science or humanities course on the demographics or design of Chicago neighborhoods, transit systems that potentially impact fan attendance and engagement. We could go even deeper. Is there a social economic correlation to who are Cubs fans versus White Sox fans? There's just no shortage of ways that you could use this technology to go even beyond powerful questions, but reporting analysis, having a market landscape analysis and showing young people how to properly vet sources that are leading to an overarching claim that then could become a presentation and taking kids through different learning objectives while infusing AI across the unit that leads to this culminating artifact, which could be a presentation, it could be a capstone project, research paper, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so yeah, so not just using things like ChatGPT, which are very, I uh, would call them SaaS services, really simple things to use, but actually understanding what is machine learning and how it we can use it to to dive into questions like, you know, how can I get more fans engaged in the sports event or what factors go into that, things like that. Um, something they can apply later on. It's really good. Uh, let me get, I want to get back to the uh, the concerns that educators have about using something like ChatGPT or Bing Search. How do they how would an educator know whether or not a student is plagiarizing or just copying and pasting? Is there any well, are there any tools for them to help them to guard against that? Yeah, there are definitely tools that schools and districts can purchase similar to turnitin.com, which most schools already use to see if the paper was leveraged off of search okay. and previously submitted by another student elsewhere, whether if it's in that respective school or just in general. I imagine companies like turnitin.com potentially have filters now for ChatGPT and or Bing Chat. And I think it's a function of the same way if you were writing an MLA or an APA formatted paper, you'd have to cite your bibliography 
This okay. is going to become I, I'm not familiar another with citation. M- M- MLA and APA. What is that? So I am drawing a blank right now on <laughs> the actual abbreviations. But one, they're they're very much like a difference in how the actual citations and indentations of the structure of a paper would oh, go. And these are primarily you'll learn them in secondary and then they follow you to undergrad. And it's really going to come down to the way the paper is cited, right? Got it. And the inclusion of artificial intelligence and or chat GPT like that right now is added into the conversation of citing that sure. X artifact or piece of writing was leveraged like through AI. Like this is now going to be an appropriate source that didn't so? exist. You think that would I be able to cite Chat GPT as a source for an academic paper? I mean, like right now, I cannot cite Wikipedia as a source for an academic paper because there's sort of a circular reference. My paper might end up getting cited by as a reference in Wikipedia. That seems like the same thing might happen with Chat GPT. That yeah, there's actual discussions on this same thing with with images. This okay. image was created with Microsoft being creator. Okay, interesting. All right. Um, this is a really good conversation. Are there are there topics that we haven't talked about in this area that you feel are critical? I also think that teacher capacity building is a very important part in this shift because Thank if you. teachers are not brought into the conversation on ways that they can leverage how to use artificial intelligence through professional development channels, whether that's in the summer, whether that's mm. during school professional institute days, it will be that much more challenging to get teacher buy-in to want to incorporate AI and or machine learning into instructional practices. Oh, sure. Yeah, especially given the, the speed at which this technology is advancing. It's hard for those of us in the IT industry to keep up. And, and, the, ability, and the ability to play in the sandbox. Yes. Right. To test out these tools to know how do they tee up with your unit plans for your academic year. Yep. Uh, teachers pretty much have to know everything. That's <laughs> it's not an easy job. I have and nothing that, but respect for teachers. And and to that point, it's another benefit of why ChatGPT could also amplify and reduce the digital burden attached to teacher work streams. It could bolster your productivity, output, rote tasks that teachers have to perform. This type of technology could really help that redistribution of teacher output. Oh, great point. Yeah, if I can, uh, if I'm spending a lot of time wordsmithing my email newsletter to my parents, ChatGPT can definitely accelerate that. Yes, yes, it can. Excellent. Uh, I think this is a good place to stop. This has been really educational for me. Thank you, Nisaini. Nisaini I, I keep saying your name wrong. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, this is a great conversation. It's a topic that I'm really passionate about and follow trends very closely. Friends, we have such a unique opportunity to do more, to go faster, to go farther together through the use of technology.